Welcome back to our 67 Yellowstone trailer restoration project. We have a lot to do today. First, we're going to finish installing the bathroom. Then we'll finish connecting the 120 volt and 12 volt wiring to the new power distribution center. After that's done, we'll tackle installing a new rubber roof on the trailer and get it prepped to install some appliances. There's no time to waste, so let's get started. We were trying to figure out how to uh, do the shower walls. We went to Lowe's and actually found a tub surround that had a little bit of damage to it and it was marked down to like $15 and we had to cut that section off anyway so we've got a really nice uh, surround with some built-in corners that's going to work really well for the shower. Okay, we're getting ready to make our water connection at the toilet and all we have to do is put an elbow on the uh, water line coming in and then we're going to put a piece connected to the elbow going up to our water connector on the back of the toilet. So, got everything cut. Okay, that should work. Get that down inside our elbow. And that's all there is to it. I have to snug those fittings up, but it's ready for water. What we thought we would do uh, to add a little custom touch is put a, a couple rows of these small tiles, ceramic tiles, at the top of the shower enclosure and then above the tiles finish it off with our vinyl flashing. Okay, we've got our uh, vinyl flashing installed above the shower enclosure and now we're getting ready to put a row of tile, ceramic tile in here just to give it a nice accent look. I'm just going to scuff it up with a piece of sandpaper so when I put my adhesive for the tile it'll actually have something to grab a hold of. Okay, we decided to take our customization one step further here and we're going to use two sheets of our ceramic tile and use it as a backsplash behind our range top burners. You can see our circuit breakers for the 120 volt side of the power center. And then this is where our 12 volt fuses are going to be located. And then we're going to make our connections at each breaker, our main breaker and then our branch circuits. And then for the 12 volt side, the power center's already got the wiring at the back so I can make connections using wire nuts. And then I just have to run my ground wire for the 12 volt items through and ground them on this bus bar. One secret to a long-lasting rubber roof is prepping the surface properly before you install it. When all of the new Dicor roofing supplies arrived, it was time to install the new rubber roof on the project trailer. Here's how we did it. Make sure all of the roof seams are as tight and as level as possible. All of the screw heads need to be level or slightly below the surface of the roof decking. If any of the seams are wider than 1 16th of an inch, you can apply seam tape to cover the seams and the screw heads. To avoid any sharp edges from damaging the roofing membrane, you can either bevel the edge of the roof decking using a sander or you can use fleece tape over the edges. Next, sweep and or blow compressed air over the entire roof prior to starting on the installation. After you measure the roof, cut the roofing membrane to fit. Be sure and allow some excess on the ends and the sides that can be trimmed later. Lay the roofing membrane over the roof and make sure the excess is evenly spaced at the front and rear and side to side. Fold the membrane in half exposing the roof decking on one half. 
Apply the adhesive using a roller attached to a handle. Carefully roll both ends of the membrane over the adhesive trying to avoid any wrinkles. Now fold the other side back and repeat the process. Finish by sweeping out any air bubbles in the roofing membrane starting in the middle of the roof and working towards the sides. Installing a roof air conditioner is not difficult. You need to make sure and follow all the electrical codes and read all the installation instructions prior to installing the AC unit. With this air conditioner we have enough cooling power to turn the old trailer into an igloo if we want to. After the new roof was installed we installed the new air conditioner, the power roof vents, vent covers, the tank vent caps, and the new motorized TV antenna. Then we moved to the interior of the trailer and we installed our overhead lights, wired the 12 volt roof vents, and installed the stereo system. Two of our three major systems in the restoration are almost completed, the water system and the electrical system. That leaves us with the LP gas system. Before we can install the LP gas appliances, the cylinders, and the regulator, we need to run our LP gas lines. To do that, we ran copper tubing from the front of the trailer and branched off to our four LP gas appliances. The range and oven, the furnace, the refrigerator, and the water heater. The trailer frame already had some holes through the cross members that we routed the copper through, and we used rubber grommets to protect the gas lines from damage. Wherever a fitting is required, we used a flaring tool to make our connections. Here's how we did it. Whenever you flare tubing for an LP gas line, it's extremely important that you do it properly to create a good seal. When you cut the copper tubing, you want a nice straight cut. Then you want to ream the cut piece of tubing to remove any burrs or sharp edges. The flare needs to be smooth and free of any edges for it to seal properly and you always want to remember to put the fitting on before you flare the tubing. Before we could install the three-way refrigerator and the microwave, I needed to frame the cabinet where they would be installed. When you install a refrigerator, it's important that the cabinet has zero tolerances on the sides, top, and bottom. The only place you want heat to go is behind it, so the heat rises up and goes out of the top vent. If you leave an air pocket somewhere that the heat can get to and just sit there, it affects the efficiency of the refrigerator. Here's how we did it. We tested all of the 12 volt and 120 volt circuits to make sure everything worked properly and it was time to install the new tankless water heater. But to do that I needed to install some of the lower exterior metal where the water heater would be mounted. My original plan was to try to reuse the original exterior metal, but when I purchased all of those parts from the RV dealer who was going out of business, there were several rolls of new metal included. So that's what we used. Okay, we have our water heater switch wired. We're gonna, I hooked the battery up, we're gonna check it for power. There we go. So our water heater installation is complete. I can almost see light at the end of the tunnel. Join us next time when we finish installing the exterior metal, paint the trailer, install a new 3,500 pound axle with disc brakes, and finish the Yellowstone trailer restoration project.